Let's bring Ron Slay in here. Ron, the man brought to you by our friend Zach England at Best and Brock, personal injury attorney that can go toe to toe with the insurance company's attorneys. Zach's got your back. Zach England of Best and Brock. Good morning, Ron. How are you? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's happening, fellas? How y'all doing? Oh, well, you're working all the time, man. You were yeah. out busting it last night, too. You are absolutely hammering it. No days off, baby. No days off for the week and the weary, man. Got to keep pushing. Gotta keep pushing. <laughs> Follow Ron at the Ron Slay. Check him out on 104.5 The Zone. And uh, we were just asking about this uh, checkered Nealon. I'm sorry, Checker Thompson bowling thing. Football so, season is over, Dave. I'm sorry. We're in sorry. basketball season. You know me. I'm reading about prospects for 2025. <laughs> uh, but Ron, checkering Thompson bowling. Do the players notice that? Does that put any more pressure on them? To, I mean, they didn't do that when you were there, but do you think it has any effect at all? Nah, no pressure. I think it's more so it's, it's cool for the fans to feel involved in the game. I think it's something for the um for the opposing team to worry about and look at when they come in. And, you know, I think it's, it's you know, it's, it's unity. It's, it's showing everybody's moving in the same direction. Everybody's cheering on. We know where the home, home court lies. And um, I, I think it just – but you get my thing with it is you got to give them something to cheer for, like you you gotta you gotta go out there and deliver, and it doesn't mean you put any extra effort into it. But man, you don't want to let the whole crowd down. I mean, you've done it done it once against Kentucky, then you did it against Missouri, getting beat at the buzzer. So another opportunity, man, to set the record straight, man, and, and give the home crowd something to fight for. So I, I love it. I love the idea of it. And I think it's just a little bit of sprinkling trickle over and uh, trickled over from football. And I think it's great. Ron, um, do, do heartbreak losses like last week start to get in players' heads? I remember your fir- y'all's first year under Buzz Peterson. I feel like y'all lost every game by last second shots. And it yeah. seemed like you kind of knew at some point that, the, that you were just going to get bad luck. Does that start to creep in players' heads some? Yeah, I think so. And then I, I also believe um, <laughs> when you're in it, it's kind of hard to, you know, kind of grasp it. But when you're watching it from afar, it's like, dude, this just keeps happening. I do think the one thing we kept on looking forward to um, was, especially the next year, was like, uh, when we were waiting on it that, that year, like, man, at some point we got to get the breaks because we're out here playing hard. Like, yeah, we shoot ourselves in the foot sometimes, but, man, ain't nobody getting breaks like this, man, like back-to-back buzzer beaters. So at some point, man, you just know. And I, and I, I, I think the difference with this team, too, is you got more of a veteran bunch, you know, and um, so you understand um, how to plug away. You know, that's – that's what's supposed to be. <laughs> You're supposed to have a veteran bunch and experienced guys that kind of plug away and can always go back to the drawing board and do details and, and work their way up to getting victories. And I think this bunch should be able to do that. Like you got some seniors out there leading this group. They should be able to, even with Zakai being a sophomore who's well beyond his years right now, should be able to get this group on task and following the, the, the right method to get a victory. At this point in the season, Ron, a, a lot of Tennessee fans would like to see Tennessee just open it up under Rick Barnes, start running and, and all that sort of thing. I Is that really realistic, though? You can't just suddenly change who you are mid-February, can you? No, it's going to be difficult. <laughs> it's it's going to be difficult to do. I think um, one thing I think that can happen, um, I think they can extend pressure on their own a little bit. But you got to, by doing that, um, I'm saying so if if they're waiting at half court, which Tennessee is a great half court defense. If Zakai was to pick up three quarter court, you got to show that you can do this without fouling in the back court. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure Rick didn't tell him to, hey man, when they inbound the ball, get up there and pressure him 94 feet. Zakai felt that in the, like he felt the momentum shifting and felt guys in the crowd getting into it, and he took it upon himself to go up there and be like, okay, I'm going to pick up. He's all good with that until you show that you can't do that. So I got to protect you from yourself, so I got to make everybody get back. I'm sure they would love to play with um, pace. He would love to play with pace a lot. But do they play well with pace? That's the question, you know. And so a lot of times you got to protect the team from themselves. Um, what happens when you're pushing it in transition? Julian Phillips starts getting charges because – you think it's this open court, you know, him being a freshman. Um, it's, it's so many different things that 
you can go with, and it's all up to the players to prove that they can do that. If you want to take that into your own hands, prove it. Like I know we used to press um, on our own, you know, and um, oh, really? it, it, yeah, it used to always come out, and um, because we used to feel like, man, come on, man, we got to turn it up a little bit, and that was the way we turn it up. So, but we also trusted everybody that was coming into the game to be able to do the same thing. Um, and that was just the players' um, feeling. We would always see Isaiah. Isaiah jumped on the ball on out of bounds. We were like, oh, well, I guess we're about to press right here. Everybody else falling in line because he wasn't running back. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, so is there uh, – I said this earlier this week, Ron. I want to know what your thoughts are because, you know, I've been the I've been the gloating, talking trash, talking down <laughs> Tennessee basketball for about three weeks. But I actually <laughs> – Gabe had a. I saw a silver lining from the Missouri game on Saturday, which was what I said was I was worried for a while that Tennessee, if a team was just firing lights out on all cylinders from outside, Tennessee would get run out of the building. They didn't get run out of the building. They should have won that game. Is that? Am I reading too much positivity into that, or or do you think there is a silver lining in that? No, I think it is a silver lining. I think it is. Um, it's a, a good sign that you see a team that can play with desperation. I think this is probably only the second time we've seen this group, um, especially getting getting blown out the way they were, be able to fight back and show that they can take the lead. And um, like you said, could have should have walked away with that game. I think the other side, other game was Arizona at Arizona. Even though the score didn't get that far of a margin, you did get to see this team get down, fight back, get down, fight back, and then take the lead and kind of – you know, almost put it away, but I think it's good. Uh, that's good going forward to be able to see that in different instances. And um, I think you spot on. Like you gotta take some out of it, especially on buzzer beaters. It's because it, it, it's as bad as it was for Santi to miss the free throws, Toby to step in, Zakai to be out of the game right then. Man, you you gotta understand. Like that was your game. Like I mean. Yes, Missouri got the win, but they really didn't beat you. Like, you really beat yourself. And I, I me personally, I can live with that much, much more than um, what Alabama did to Vanderbilt or Oklahoma did to Alabama. You know what I'm saying? Like, a blowout is – you just got – man, you just got handled. And this is like, we got to go back. Let's watch this film. Let's watch how soft we were, this, that, and other. That, uh, a long shot, almost half court. Uh, man, that good job. You know what I mean? Tip your cap. Let's get back to work. Did you see the uh, quote? It's from Dave Matter at the St. Uh, St. Louis Free Press. And he overheard a, a Missouri player supposedly say to Visco, he said, uh, you, you'll miss this one. You missed the one in the last game. Yeah. Does that sort of stuff actually get under your skin or in your head at all? I mean, I would try it. I would try. I, I'm, a, I'm almost, I almost definitely would. Like, um, but I, I, th I think. See, this is the different, the different in mindset. Because if he would have did it to me, I like, I would have told him, well, you know, I'm gonna make it. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, have not ignored it or anything. I said, well, you know, I'm gonna make it. The difference is, y'all got the same color zone, and I'm at home this time. I'm making these shots. You know, what I mean, this ain't Vanderbilt. They got some tricky going down there. Y'all ain't got no tricks up here in Thompson Bowling. We the tricksters. You know what I'm saying? It's like I would have did something. Like it's no way. The referee probably would have told us, hey man, y'all cut it out, cut it out. You know, something, but no, nah, you're not just talking to me like that. It, and kudos to Santi just trying to go about his business, but you gotta have a, a, a cocky arrogance to yourself, you know what I'm saying? To to kind of get yourself out of there so you're not thinking about it. You know what I'm saying? You go in your routine and you you get to doing what you do, you take your dribbles, you follow through. And you knock it down, and you're able to live with it, man. I, I've had a situation like that as a pro where um, I, I missed um, a shot and then was able to get back into that situation. And we beat Giorgio Armani's team like it was a derby. So it was kind of like a rival game. And um, I, I, I missed the first one. And one of the guys said something to me. And it was, it was so weird. Like I started seeing like little spots, you know, <laughs> like little spots. So I walked away from the line. And came back, you know what I mean, and started talking. And I was like, okay, let me get back into my rhythm. And ended up making it. We won the game. So you, you got to do whatever makes you comfortable, man. You got to have some kind of arrogance and, and cockiness about yourself, man, because you do this all the time. And it can't nobody talk you out of the game. You've been playing too long for somebody to talk you out of your game. Well, you you internalized it, had a, had a great answer 
there, but on the outside, as an analyst, are you concerned about Tennessee's clutch gene, given what you said? No, I'm not, just because we've seen it before. We saw it with Josiah last year in the Texas game when Josiah missed that three-point. It was pretty much the same same thing. Um, didn't happen two games in a row like it did with Santi, but it did happen in the Texas game. He missed it for them to get the win, wide open on the wing. All we heard about leading up to after that was guys picking him up, telling Josiah, man, we'll love you to shoot that shot again. That's kind of the same thing you got going on with Santi right here. And you saw the run that Tennessee went on after losing that game at Texas. So maybe this is a rallying cry for the team to come together, block out all the noise and depend on each other and get back to that 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 bond that they have and, and just push for each other and, and, and just keep going. So that's what I'm looking for, because I, I believe we've seen this before in last year. And it's different when people rallying around Santi this year instead of Josiah. The problem is, um, will Josiah and those guys be out there? Do you see this? Um, do you see the final six games here? Do you look at it as an opportunity, or uh, oh no, this is going to be brutal for Tennessee because they start with the number one team in the country. They still got to visit Auburn. They've got to visit yep. Kentucky. They've got to visit um, at Texas A and M, who you accurately called last week is the most dangerous team in the SEC outside of Alabama right now. Serious, they serious man. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't look at it as dangerous. I look at it as a, like you said, opportunity because the way the parity is in college basketball. You have no earthly idea who's going to win night in and night out outside of, it seems, Alabama um, since the Houston loss. Uh, I say Houston. Um, since the Oklahoma loss, but you see Purdue go down. You see Arizona. Like, everybody's just up and down, up and down. And um, so week in and week out, you get an opportunity to prove. You know, it may not be one game. It may be two, you know. So um, I think everything is ahead of them, and they control their own destiny, like literally. You know, the first thing – is first and i think you gotta um narrow it down as you want to get that you get the first round i mean the first two buys going into the sec tournament and you build on it the way you did last year focus in on those games when you three get your championship move on and then you start to reset your goals so i think week by week they understand man that they have a challenge and it's not just them everybody has a challenge because now the way vanderbilt is peaking um every, <laughs> they that's not a that's not a pushover them so i think they got more on their plate than um, a team like Kentucky has more on their plate than the Tennessee does. Tennessee's in a really great position right now, um, especially with everybody else losing and you being able to tread water until you get a victory. And this will be a big, big one tonight.